Want to get to the statewide effort to battle the coronavirus pandemic. And joining us live to talk about it is Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Governor, we are glad to have you with us. Now, you've just issued. My an pleasure, thank you. Yes, thank you. You've just issued an order extending the stay home order statewide for another month. When do you see this pandemic peaking, and how bad do you think things are going to get here in Texas? First, let me tell you about what that order does. I want your viewers to understand uh, that I did extend the time for the state executive order uh, to comply with distancing practices. However, I also heightened the standards. In my prior order, it was possible for people in sizes of 10 or less together. That no longer is allowed. Instead, uh, we're saying that unless you are involved in an essential service, you must stay at home. We were trying to achieve best practices to minimize any further spread of COVID-19. If people follow those instructions, if they continue to stay at home, then we will reach the peak sooner. I've had the opportunity to visit with Dr. Burks, Dr. Fauci, those doctors you see who consult with the president and talk to America, and they are saying that the United States should peak sometime in mid-April, and Texas should peak sometime soon after that. And that's what we're trying to do, to, to reach the peak as soon as possible with as low of a level of number of people contracting positive as possible, and we achieve that faster or better with everyone complying with the orders to stay at home. Now, we've seen an explosion in uh, cases in states like New York and California, Washington, even Michigan. How would you compare what's going on here as far as the effect of the pa uh, pandemic and the response? Uh, do you think we are just going to get off lighter once it's all said and done? Well, first, understand this, and that our numbers will continue to grow over the course of this month. That said, uh, there are two ways in which Texas is different than, say, New York, for example. One is, timing-wise, we actually got ahead of New York uh, with regard to implementing practices that will reduce the spread. Second, our hospital capacity is far greater. Uh, according to measurements uh, that were issued by the national studies, we have more hospital beds available in the state of Texas than what is expected to be needed by the total number of COVID-19 patients. That said, understand this, and that is we're not taking for granted that that will be all that we need. So one thing I work on every single day is expanding hospital bed capacity and expanding capacity for things like ventilators. Feel as though we're in good shape as far as those things are concerned, beds and ventilators and the like. Uh, according to national-based analysis that the advisors for the president rely upon, the bed capacity, the ventilator capacity will be sufficient to meet what's categorized as the height of the bubble for Texas. But understand we're not taking that for granted. As a result, we are adding uh, additional hospital beds across the state of Texas, including in the Houston area and uh, we're, we're seeking shipments as we speak of additional ventilators to make sure that everybody who will need a ventilator will have access to one. Governor, this is the first of the month. This is a time when a lot of folks pay their bills. There are a lot of people right now out of work. What is your timetable for when things could start to feel more normal again? And what do you want to say to a lot of folks who at this point are just really concerned about whether or not they're going to be able to take care of their families? Sure. Well, first, most immediately, with regard to family needs, uh, there, there are several pieces of good news coming your way here in the next week or two. Uh, one is uh, the, the money that is being issued by the federal government uh, to families across Texas uh, should be hitting your bank account in the next two weeks. Second, uh, based in part on the funding provided by the federal government for those who are unemployed, your unemployment benefits uh, will extend further in time for a longer period of time than what they were originally scheduled for. I know firsthand that many people who have been seeking unemployment benefits have been unable to get through to our office. The reason for that is because of the crush of the number of people calling to get in. Know that we've added hundreds of more people to reply to requests for unemployment benefits. You will be getting your unemployment benefits, and those benefits will be longer than what was anticipated 
helping people uh, be able to pay their bills and, and live uh, the way they need to live for the next few weeks until the economy does get up and going again. Yeah, well, I'm sure folks are going to feel uh, much, uh, much relief hearing that. Easter is coming up very soon, Passover as well. Uh, what do you say to, to churches, synagogues, uh, houses of religion at this point? How soon before they're able to get together again? And are you concerned about perhaps anybody um, resisting and going ahead and meeting? Well, th this was part of my executive order yesterday, and, and that is instructions that, that freedom of religion is allowed. However, uh, there is the expectation uh, that uh, any synagogue or church or any type of religious entity uh, will, will practice the standards that have been articulated by the president, articulated by the governor, and articulated by your local officials, and that is uh, wherever possible, avoid any type of gathering wherever there may be any type of gathering practices must be utilized to ensure that adequate distancing takes place so there is no transmission of COVID-19. That said, I have every reason to believe that every church leader in Houston and in Texas agrees that the health of their members is the paramount issue right now and that no church leader should or would compromise a person's health. Well, Governor, we'd certainly